Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? Winning Cures Everything, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the NFL Gambling Pick Show for week number eight. You are doing fine in this. Fine. I am not. I'm not making money yet. Yeah, you're making money. I mean, it's 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 better than losing money. True. I'll tell you that. Uh, I am two and three. Well, I went two and three last week. Lost one hundred twenty-seven dollars and five cents. Chris went three and two. He won thirty-six dollars and fifty-five cents. Overall, I am sixteen and twenty-two. I'm down nine point three two units. Chris is eighteen and sixteen. He is up four point nine five units. You know who did really well last week? Who? I D R Smith. He was in our football picks contest. He went nine and one against the spread. He got himself a fifty dollar steak dinner down at Fitz Casino. He got himself a twenty five dollar free play, etc. We got some prizes coming up this week. You can go enter for free. Put in your email. Put in your name. Spend a couple of minutes making the picks. It's all multiple choice. Just pick one side or the other, and you can win some cool prizes, too, from Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They bring you the show every single week. You can find more information about all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. They got some good stuff going on down there. Like We're, we're obviously big fans. We love Tunica, and uh, they treat us well. They will treat you well. Go check them out, tunicatravel.com. Let's talk about our NFL gambling picks. You have got more than me this week. I've never done that. No, you have not. Well, you did in college last week. Well, college last week, yeah. but That was the first time, too. But it don't happen often. No, very rare. I play very few games, which I think helps me pick a little better. Yeah. To narrow my window down, but I like a lot of games this week. Well, go ahead and get us started, buddy. Let's fire in. We have rules. Yeah, we do. I live by these rules. We bet against bad teams. There's a lot of good teams playing bad teams this week. Yes, there are. That's why I see a lot of lines that I like, which is strange. Not a lot of dogs. That's okay. I'm going to Atlanta. And I think Hustle and Bustle and Russell are going to take a little bit of frustration out of that hard fought loss when Baltimore came to town. And I think they're going to beat the hell out of the Falcons. The line is three and a half. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's not so, one of my picks. So I will take but, but I do se- like that. $75 on Seattle. $75 at minus 110? Yep. Minus 110. All right. First one up for me. It's also a $75 bet. I got a lot of faith in this team. Okay. Now, if they bite me again, I'm going to be real mad. But the Eagles are going to Buffalo. I love the Bills in this spot. Bills minus one and a half, seventy-five dollars. I think Josh Allen looks fine. I think this defense is going to shut down Carson Wentz. I, there's just something about this Eagles team right now that they ain't clicking. That something's wrong, and I don't think that going to Buffalo is the place to get it fixed. So if you are capable of getting destroyed by the Cowboys. On Sunday Night Football, uh, you're definitely capable of losing by more than a point and a half at Buffalo. And I think that that's going to happen this weekend. Give me $75 on the Bills at minus one and a half at minus 110. What's your next one? Going to Jacksonville. Team I think is okay. Pretty good. Yep. This team I think is really bad. Uh, The New York Jets and Sam Darnold seeing ghosts. Throwing for a million interceptions. <laughs> yeah, yes. So he doesn't need to throw for all those interceptions. He didn't have to. Gardner Minshew, his team, they're going to cut this team up. I just don't think the Jets are good. I have no idea on how or why they were able to beat the Cowboys and beat them up the way they did. But I don't think that's going to happen again for the rest of the season to anybody. Give me the Jacksonville Jaguars as minus five and a half for 50 bucks. I have literally got the exact same bet. There you go. Right here. Jags minus five and a half. I think the exact same thing here. I think that this Jaguars defense is pretty good. I think Darnold is having problems after coming back from 
having mono and whatever else. I still he didn't he don't look right. Like he did okay against like how about this? He looked good against the Cowboys, but did he really? They had like four explosive plays, yeah. and that was about it. Like those plays look good. Mm-hmm. Everything else not super efficient. Like I, it was a statistical anomaly. I don't think the Jets are good at all. I don't either. And I think that the Jags really want this win. Sure. And I think they're gonna go out and they're gonna get it. Jags minus five and a half, fifty bucks. What uh? What's your next one? Best game of the weekend. Panthers going to the 49ers. Love San Francisco. Love what San Francisco has been doing. But I think five and a half points is too much to give up to a Panthers team. I think this Panthers team is real good. They're not a bad team. And so you can't just lay all those points. So I like Carolina. What uh, what you got, 50? Yeah. I've got the exact same game. We, we've got three of the same game, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, Panthers plus five and a half here. Uh, I mean, I've got 50 bucks on it. Like, I I do love the 49ers. But these two teams look very, uh, not similar, yeah. but like, they're both really good. They're both really good. And right. I, agree. I agree. It's an afternoon game. Like, I, I, I think the Panthers can keep this thing close. Uh, I like the 49ers to win it. But would it surprise me if the Panthers win? I was about to say, it wouldn't shock me if the 49ers fall to this one. Yeah. I think because losing a game here and there is going to happen in the NFL. Yeah. So I agree. Um, So, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm taking Panthers plus five and a half. Um, Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It's your next one. Moving on down the line here. I love this Indianapolis Colts team. I've been on them all season. I'm not getting off this train. They've bucked me one time against the Raiders. After that, they've been a winning machine, a covering machine. They get the Denver Broncos coming to town. It's a bad football team. A bad football team. Yeah. Against a really good, a world-class football team. Minus six. Got to lay a touchdown almost. Okay. That doesn't scare me. I'm all right with that. I'm a big boy. They can do it. Yeah. I, I agree with you. What, uh, what you got on 50? 50 bucks. 50 bucks. So other than... Seattle, everything else is going to be 50? Probably. Okay. I'll let yeah. you decide at the end. The answer to that is yes. Okay. It's just easy for you. No, it's a, a, Easier for me. Anything's easy. Just tell me afterwards That's and we'll be good with it. I'm not going to remember what I said. I, <laughs> next game up for me, I have got the New England Patriots at home against the Browns. What we, what, uh, what we saw on Monday night, was complete and utter humiliation. And I think that it happens again this week. I agree. I think that Baker Mayfield is going to be so confused by this defense. Because this this New England defense is other world kind of stuff. And I don't think Baker's ever seen anything like this. I don't either. And, you know, what Brown's all flashy, everything like that. Like, I don't know why you would ever think it's not first, about flash, though. No, it's a first-year head coach and a quarterback that apparently loves to give the ball away against a team that, I mean, this is the all-time winningest coach and a defense that loves to take the ball. Sure. Like, I think the Patriots are going to have way more opportunities with the football than the Browns will. I love this. I love this line. I'm yeah. getting less than a, I'm, I'm less than two touchdowns. Yep. Like I got a hundred dollars on the Pats minus thirteen. Like yep. I, I'm. You started doing it early, and and I just didn't want to believe that they could possibly be that good. This is the best team in the NFL, and it's not even close. Yep. Like I, this team, like if they go far enough into this season, you think Tom ain't looking at maybe going undefeated? Well, yeah, I know, I know it's they, really difficult, but I they know. but they play one game at a time better than anybody else. Yes, no, hundred percent. How do you go undefeated? You win every game. You play one game at a time. I understand. They just that. try it's, to go. One, I'm, I'm, no, saying, I'm not saying. Yeah, I agree with you. They go far enough into the season. They're not going to have one of those where, like last year, they just kind of go through the motions at. Well, yeah, because they lost early though. Yeah, no, they lost. They lost before they lost to Detroit. Yeah, oh, I know. Detroit was what their third loss. But it, I guess it was. Yeah. Yeah, but either way, that's what I'm saying. They they haven't lost this season, and 
they were that close to going undefeated before. And I'm just, you know, it's Bill, out there. What Bill's doing right now, I've never seen or heard of before. I've got the exact same bet. Um, I, I, I put it out there on Twitter in the middle of the game last night uh, during the Monday Night Football game. If you think this is bad, look, as much as fun we want to make as the Jets, Adam Gates is a real head coach. Freddie Kitchens is not. He's not. He is out of his league. He is out of his depth. Okay? And and the separation between what Bill is going to do to him and what he did to Adam Gase is not a lot. It's, yeah. It could be worse. And if and if you think Baker's better than Sam, look, I thought he was a hell of a lot better than Sam based on what I saw last year. But that don't appear to the, be the, uh, the, the case. The talent Sam has compared to the talent Baker has, not close. Not close. And Sam hasn't been as bad as Baker. You uh, all right, so I'm guessing you're taking the pets. Yes. What uh, fifty bucks? Yeah, fifty bucks. Right, no, right. I'll, I'll do a hundred with you. You gonna do a hundred? I'm gonna do a hundred. I'm doing a hundred. Then I'm with you. Let's do it. I'm in it with it. you. So, because I, I think this is easy money. Like I just, I I don't see where it is. I mean, the Browns defense is legit. Yeah. But at some point in time, can the defense help? If you know, if they're on the field constantly. No, you're right. You're right. Last game up for me, I have got the Thursday night game. The Redskins at the Vikings. I think the Redskins are putrid. I think they are terrible. And I think the Vikings are hitting on all cylinders. Kirk Cousins has looked like a completely different quarterback. Not to mention the fact that he is at home. I mean, Dalvin Cook going to be running all over the place in this game. I love the Vikings here, minus 16. I know it's a big it's a big number. But it's one less than one of the key numbers, and I feel good about that. So, uh, I got 50 bucks on it at minus 110. The Vikings, minus 16 against the Redskins. Redskins, this this may be tank time. It, it may be tank time. This is this is the FU game from Cousins yeah. to Washington. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, so, he's going to destroy this team. I think I agree with that. My last bet, Tampa Bay plus two and a half going to going to the Titans. I, I just I don't think this Titans team knows what in the hell is going on. They are lucky as anything to win last week. Tampa had two weeks to prepare. I know the bye week's probably fifty fifty. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. But Bruce Arians a real head coach. You give yeah. him Byron Leftwich, Todd Bowles, this this kind of opportunity to get ready to get rested. I'm going to tell you this. Tampa's defense is going to stamp up. They're going to man up. Titans offense isn't moving the ball. I think you're right. James doesn't give it away too much. They're going to win this game easy. They're going to win it. I'm catching two and a half. Give me 50 bucks on the Bucks. It is interesting that you closed out with the Bucks because as he does every week, we are about to be joined by Mr. TJ Reeves, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, you can find him on Twitter at, <coughs> excuse me, guys. There we go. <coughs> I think I got him that time. <laughs> I apologize. You can just keep it muted. We're done. I guess we are. Let's see. So, yeah, Tampa Bay Bucks sideline reporter TJ Reeves. You can uh, find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Go download his podcast, Three Dog Thursday Podcast. Comes out every Thursday morning. He does a fantastic job. We hop on there with him, of course. Uh, he's he's great. He's awesome. Here he is. And on with us, like every week, of course, to talk a little NFL action, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, Mr. TJ Reeves, from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Grab him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, you're coming up to our neck of the woods, right? Absolutely. Make way. Uh, part, the, part the Red Sea. Roll out the red carpet, any other metaphor, Buccaneers and the Tennessee Titans in an epic showdown upcoming in Nash, Vegas. So I will be in your part of the world with the Bucks off the bye week, and let's hope things go better on this continent than they did two weeks ago <laughs> on the European <laughs> continent for the Bucks in London against Carolina boys. That, uh, that Titans defense is, is something else. I mean, they are very opportunistic. We'll call it that. Very opportunity. Did you, well, did you watch him yeah, at all against the Chargers? I, I did. I did. I saw that game. It was a wild game. It's a, it's a rare bye week where I get to sit at home with the red zone just like everybody else and watch the games. 
And is Melvin Gordon still laying at the one foot line because he was there for a while on two consecutive plays? Have we confirmed whether they scooped him up yet in time for this Sunday's Buccaneers Titans game? I think they did a great job keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, (laughs) he may still be there. Um, It's interesting how that game ended, and of course, we're going to pay a lot of attention uh, to the to the Titans all week here. Get ready for this game because. Uh, on the field, the officials gave the Chargers the go-ahead touchdown not once but twice on the Eckler catch, and then replay overruled it. And then the Gordon first attempt, they called it a touchdown and then, and, and then overruled it on replay. And then they stopped him again. Uh, what a stand by the Titans. And so this uh, now now my Bucks head in there off the bye week, boys. It's, uh, it's sure to be a fun time, of course, because nobody has any idea what to expect from the Titans. And we also have no idea what to expect from the Bucks either. So it's I, I refuse to bet on the Titans again this season. Uh, maybe next year. I, we'll see. Uh, but right now, I've got no idea what to make of this team with Ryan Tannehill or with Mariota or anybody else. Like, the, the offensive line is awful. The defense is pretty good. And some weeks they got it, some weeks they don't. So let's, uh, let's jump into another interesting game. A really, really big line. The Pats have been killing everybody. Oh. But the Browns, you know, they're coming into Gillette. They're coming into Foxborough. They're getting 13 points. They've got playmakers on defense. I mean, on offense. They've got, well, I guess on defense as well. Nah, they've got playmakers on defense. they got playmakers everywhere. So, you know, it's not like the Browns are terrible. I mean, could they possibly come up? Is this something that maybe you're going to get into on, uh, on 3 Dog Thursday? You are on the right track. Obviously, we were talking on the college segment, a a plug for the Winning Cures college picks, that uh, a Wisconsin game with uh, Ohio State at Ohio State and everybody looking at that big line. It's it's, it's attractive, and I can't explain why. It's the same thing here with the Browns off the bye week. New England just dismantled the Jets on, on Monday night here. We're joking again. If you left the Jets alone in the stadium for the rest of Monday night into Tuesday morning, would they have ever scored, even by themselves? They looked that bad. <laughs> I still can't figure out how they beat the Dallas Cowboys a week and a half ago, uh, as bad as they looked on Monday night. And I know some of it is the Patriots, but still, if you're looking at a spot where everybody would say, oh, stay away from the Browns, the Patriots are going to kill them, this is the kind of game, and Chris, am I playing your song here? I know you're, you're, you're sliding towards the Browns. You were at their game with the Rams earlier this year. I think they can hang in here with New England. I'm not saying win the game, but they, they might give the Patriots some problems and make this a game on Sunday, or do you think that I'm just totally full of it here on this game? I, I, I watched Bill Belichick take a – second-year quarterback, and a first-year head coach with a new team, and I saw him beat them like a drum. And Adam Gase (laughs) knows him. Adam Gase has been in this division. He's not a first-time head coach. I think what he is going to do to uh, Freddie Kitchens and Baker Mayfield could get biblical. I I mean, it's (laughs) just (laughs) – it's going to (laughs) – I mean, it's – Byron Brimstone, Locust – yeah, Play, it, it, it could it, be that I, bad. I mean, oh, yeah. I really do. Listen, Baker doesn't need any help throwing picks, and he's throwing yeah. them to teams that that how can't, about, how can't about intercept the, the ball. They have allowed one touchdown pass, the Patriots, and that was kind of the fluke one on the Thursday night that Golden Tate bobbled and caught and took off and ran in the end zone. They've allowed one touchdown pass, and they have like 18 or 19 interceptions. Yes. It's a one to like 18 yes. ratio. Hang on. They've <laughs> only – the that? defense, oh. the Patriots' defense has only given up three touchdowns the entire year. One uh. pass, two rushes in uh, the, the Redskins game. That's it. But isn't this an argument – for it makes no sense, but welcome to the NFL. That same Jets team that looked so hapless and pathetic put it on the Dallas Cowboys the previous week. The Rams, who had lost three games in a row, rolled into Atlanta and destroyed the Falcons. This league is tough to figure out week to week for no explained reason. So I'm going with the, I don't have a real valid reason. I'm playing a gut here. I'm playing a hunch that Cleveland's got the weapons to hang in, and maybe New England takes them a little lightly. They're a little overconfident, shorter week. I don't know. We'll see. Well, good luck to you. I'm just telling you. Those <laughs> things happen for everybody. There are 31 teams that that makes sense for. 
Right. But, but the but Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots are just one that just doesn't seem to ever get got. They lose. They lose all the time. And they're used to losing to, like, non-playoff teams. Last year, right. all four losses were to teams that didn't make the playoffs. So, you know, it's not impossible. And they're not going to run through the season undefeated. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just – Freddie Kitchens – is is an abomination to coach. Oh, now. he's already writing him off. Just light a candle for me in the window when it gets to be yeah. seventeen nothing, twenty four nothing, twenty nine nothing, or whatever it's going to be. <laughs> Look, Sunday. if Baker if Baker, hey. if Baker didn't throw the ball to the other team against bad defenses, and now he's playing a team that has picked off more people than anyone on the planet, then you yeah. know we'd have a different conversation. So good luck can to I, you. Can I just take Can I just take a few <laughs> seconds here and just take a two handed figurative swing at Derek Carr yeah. of the Raiders because last week I had them on Three Dog Thursday at Green Bay, <laughs> and w- w- on that play at the end of the first half where he's diving for the pylon with the ball in the off hand, the wrong hand, the left hand, and fumbles it out of the back of the end zone. That's a play that he made a year ago and screwed up, and it got it got a huge amount of attention and coverage on you can't do this. You cannot risk the field position in the moment. At the moment that that fumble happened, they were second and goal on that play, and it's a 14-10 to 10 game. I don't know that they would have stopped Aaron Rodgers any different, but that game would have been a different game. I'm here to tell you it would have been a different game if they had gotten in the end zone if he doesn't fumble that ball. So that was frustrating to me for Three Dog Thursday purposes last week. So I am soured right now on my man John Gruden and his, and his Raiders, at least for this weekend. I'm staying can, away from them. Can we talk about how that has to be the worst rule in all of sports? In any sport? It's a bad that, rule. I, is, I agree. If you fumble but, it from the six-yard line to the three-yard line, you say you cannot fumble a ball forward. <laughs> therefore, right, it, it goes back, back to, to the six. But if you <laughs> exactly. fumble it from the three-yard line to the end zone – then all of a sudden the other team oh, gets got, the ball got, well, to right. the 20. I got one even better for you. If that ball had rolled into the end zone and someone else had recovered it, it's not a touchdown. That's what I'm saying. It goes back to the original spot <laughs> because it cannot be fumbled forward. Uh, but if it can be fumbled forward and go out of bounds, that doesn't make any sense at all. It's the, worst, it's the worst rule in sports. I I, <laughs> I, I I think we agree. I can't I think understand we agree. why they haven't changed it yet. I, 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 I commiserate it with you. I had I had the Raiders as well. Gary, you had the Raiders too, didn't you? I most certainly did. I think we all three had them. It was bad. But hey, I got a bow to you. I know you were in Chicago. I know you were in Chicago, you boys, last weekend, and Chris came on the show and said, Saints, 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 Saints. And you were right again. 100%. And they have now won. Uh, we've, I come on your show every week saying this. They've now won all five games with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. They've, they've won them with defense, with creative play calling, with special teams play. Sean Payton is the coach of the year right now. For what they have done without Drew Brees, it's remarkable. And you guys were right there in the Windy City to see it. Wow. Yeah, we, we were definitely uh, – we were in Chicago. And now, as far as coach of the year, eh, I mean, Kyle Shanahan's got a – He's he's giving him a run for his money right Bill, now. I get, I, Bill, Bill B. Credit, Bill B. has a defense credit, that's only but, given up three touchdowns. <laughs> didn't we? I understand, but didn't we say on your show? Hasn't everybody said everywhere they were in big trouble without Drew Brees and oh, probably yeah. going to have a losing record? They've won every game. No, I, I think him. there are four candidates Coaching. for Coach of the Year this year, and they're so close because of what they're doing and what they've done to to this point. It's unbelievable. Frank Wright's the other guy that that that, yeah. that gets it. So that's it's so hard to say one guy deserves over the other because if you see what they're doing and what they're capable of, um, it, it's been pretty impressive. Impressive. And uh, yeah, my my uh, Bucks plus twelve hundred to uh, to win that division is is not happening. It's not looking good right now, but uh, there's a long way to go here. And, and the Saints die. may run away and hide, but you, uh, you never know because you haven't gotten into the mix of the division games yet either. Uh, we'll see on that one. But it'll, it'll be fun uh, to watch the games unfold this weekend, and I'm looking forward to heading up to your part of the world there where my Buccaneers are an underdog. Will one or both of the winning cures guys jump on the Buccaneer bandwagon off the bye week? I'm curious to hear what you guys think now, on the, the show. I'm going to be listening. The, these are – you probably won't hear that one. <laughs> I, I, you might. Yeah, you right, might. You, Don't. Gary might. doesn't speak for both. Of us. Hey, I'm just saying. Those are two teams that I just that you. I, one of those teams I like know. betting on. I've bet on them a lot. 
That's fine. Well, I can't I can't stand them. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, TJ, tell us what's uh, what's on deck for Three Dog Thursday this week. I know I'm going to be on with you. Uh, what what else are we looking at? We're also going to talk with Anthony Beck, ESPN college football analyst. We'll talk a little college football, but Anthony is also part of the New York Jets. Uh, radio and TV coverage. He was at the Meadowlands for that debacle on Monday, so he'll talk to us probably as much about how bad the Jets were or how did, good uh, the Patriots did, were. Did, did he happen to see Ghost too? Uh, yeah, he may have. He I don't know if he saw Casper. I don't know who he saw, but uh, it happens when you play New England. So I, I'm looking forward to talking with Anthony about that one and see what he thinks. I mean, he's a guy that used to knock around in that AFC East and go against the Patriots and the Dolphins and the Bills when he played for the Jets. Uh, and now that division, but you know, then again, it's the NFL. Buffalo's got five wins. They're five and one. They're hanging oh, in yeah. uh, here in the early part of the season. Some of it is against weaker teams, but uh, we'll, we look forward to talking with him, and we look forward to talking about underdogs this week on the show. Some NFL doggies as well as some college doggies this week. And here, I'm looking forward to having you guys on. And I want to say again uh, publicly, thank you to the winning cheers guys. You guys have been great having me on and letting me. Help promote Three Dog Thursday. We vow to be better this week. We're wiping away some of the bad underdog picks last week. We're looking to get back on the winning track this week. <laughs> you, uh, you never look backward. You only look forward. That's right. We're yes. only looking forward from from uh, from last week. Only looking forward. That's absolutely. Forward. All right. So absolutely, go and check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find TJ over at at Buck Sideline Guy on Twitter. TJ, thank you for being here, man. Always great to be with you, boys. Thank you. All right, we appreciate TJ being in here with us. Of course, every week, go check out his podcast. He hops in with us. We hop in with him every week. Uh, It's a good relationship, good guy, good dude. So that is going to wrap up today's show. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check out all the great stuff that we've got over there, the football picks contest. Make sure you get entered before Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Go to tunicatravel.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what your picks are for the week, et cetera. I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, Anything else? Nope. We're good. All right. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.